I feel that I I got blessed in my life to born to the life I was I'm was born to lucky you yeah and sometimes it brings a big conflict because I'm enjoying my life I go to festival I play music I enjoy it with my, with my friends I have really supportive family and everything is great and I'm cheerful for that and grateful for that but at the same time there is so much suffering in the world people that born in war zones people that animals that's getting slaughtered just because we are have desires and I feel this how I can help all these people and based on what you've said you are in a perfect position to help these beings yes but because your situation does not require that you would slaughter animals or make war or kill other people in order to stay alive that is pretty lucky so in Zen we ask how may I help you This is not an empty question. This is for real. Why? Those people suffering, who are not helped, they will come to your house, crash your door, enter your apartment, and blow your life apart. Especially where you live, this is a living reality, moment to moment. So, when we say, how may I help you? It's not just our friends. It's not just people we know. It's also those people who we may dislike or detest or even hate. And if we do not go beyond our own situation, whether good or bad, we cannot reach <laughs> other people. We cannot have any positive effect on the world. So the Buddha himself was born into a super privileged situation. He was going to be king. And not a small one, big. The country was actually huge. And uh, the conquest would have been even greater. But 250 years later, King Ashoka is comparable to him. But he was first a conqueror and a king. And then he converted to Buddhism. So the Buddha himself made a very big choice. And uh, we know what kind of life he lived. So he declined all his privileges and he turned his energy inward and he attained awakening. So if you practice and you have practiced very well for the last three months, your situation does not disappear. Only your relationship changes to it. You don't become just the sole owner, the user of that, but you will be able to use that to help other people without losing it. So, In your question, it sounded like a contradiction that you live well and you enjoy life and others don't. Make a bridge between that. How do you help other people wake up, find correct lifestyle and enjoy that and in turn help even more beings? That's our task. So use your good karma and then you will be even happier. How we can see the Bodhisattva way in every action we do in our normal life? Like... The simple actions, if I help someone in the street, it's very obvious how it helps everyone and the ripples of these things and all that. And if I help uh, some place, it's also very obvious. But in the simple actions, uh, normal life, work, toilet, it's food. It's difficult. Do you do that only for yourself or for other beings as well? And if you do it also for others, then it's not selfish. Then it's Bodhisattva path. So in the Vedas, they say, don't light a fire for yourself. Don't cook just for yourself. It's a very ancient rule. It's way before the Buddha's teaching. Why? If you just light a fire for yourself and you cook just for yourself, it's very selfish. The same action, if you share it with others and you let others sit around the same fire and you share the meal, then it's community. It's more human. It's us, not just I. So then it's clear that you have gone beyond your own notion of self. And that's the Bodhisattva path. Moment to moment, very simple, not complicated. Yeah, but not always I have people to share no, with them. No, but. Oh, okay. Just do it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Tov. Other questions? So in our society, we hear a lot of stories about people being very lonely and... I was wondering if you could maybe reflect a little bit on that. Is that, what is the cause of that loneliness? Why do people lock themselves alone in a room? 
and see, there less are and less connected with others. Major alienation. One is that in this fantastic technical civilization and the way we live our lives, we alienated ourselves from nature. First of all, in the West, we considered until recently nature an opponent, something to be conquered. And unfortunately, this conquest was very successful. The earth is dying. So we alienated ourselves from nature in a very, very harmful way. Next, uh, since we fostered the individual so much in the West, we alienate from the group, even from the family, that we feel that there's so little in common. I'm so much myself and the rest of the family does not understand me. And society is even further. I have nothing to do with that group of people where I was born. And the third is we alienate from our work. Many people do the work just for the money, not because they believe in it or they feel that it's explicitly useful. And thereby we can understand the fourth, which is alien from yourself, from the person that you become, that you're running your avatar to have a functional personality, but that is not someone you, that you want to be. And because of that, we suffer tremendously. These four kinds of alienation, that explains and that answers your question. But it's not really going to the very depth that we need. What is the source of all this? The source of all this is false image or illusory identity. That we don't understand what nature is. Because we don't understand ourselves. We don't see the correct relationship between me and the family, me and the rest of society, because we are attached to ideas, false identities, illusions. And once these are gone, then this oneness appears. When you meditate correctly, the notion of self, the wall of the ego, can and shall disappear unless it has done so already. And then we can become one with nature again. We can rejoin the family again. We can be a useful and happy member of society again. And finally, we can believe in who we are. We can believe in the personality that, that we are running every single day. And that is our birthright, birthright slash Buddha nature, you name it. So when we say that things, names and forms originally do not exist, but they are created by ourselves, alienation is exactly the same thing. It's not coded anywhere. It's not our destiny. It's not our fate. If we alienate ourselves, then we are separate. If we take out the wall of the ego, we become one. It's our choice. We have a way to do both. Which one do we choose? Okay. You're welcome.